him. What's the headline going to be Friday? The 49ers take Trey Lance. <laughs> Look, I, I said it earlier that I'll believe it when I see it. And, you know, there's been all this Mac Jones talk. It seems to be a little bit more of a, like, unless it's not Mac Jones and it's, it's maybe Trey Lance. To me, I just, I, I am trusting my eyes a little bit on this one saying, Look, if you're going to move up nine spots, it better be a guy that has got immense potential. That would be Lance. Yeah, listen, I've been with you on that one all along. How about you, Diana? What's the headline going to be Friday morning? Yeah, Tim, you have a future in headline writing. Uh, this Friday, if I had to just guess what my headline would be, it would be that the Denver Broncos trade with the Atlanta Falcons to go grab a quarterback, and that quarterback is going to be Justin Fields, Greeny. So let the record show that last week I did a mock draft on this program, and I had the 49ers taking Trey Lance at three, and I had the Broncos trading up to four with Atlanta to take Justin Fields. So you guys are right along my lines here. But, Diana, let, let's go back to the to see your mock draft. <laughs> let, let's get a lot. Let, 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 there's a lot we got to get to here. So let's dive into it. Diana, I want to start with three because uh, Tim just said he, he believes Lance. You have the latest on the San Francisco 49ers and their decision-making at three. Go. Yeah, no decision, Mike. So Tim's <laughs> argument that they should – go with a different quarterback than Mac Jones is fair because Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch are mulling over the tape, the information, trying to figure out what they want to do. We know they traded up to get a quarterback, right? So they've got some control because they could potentially get the third best quarterback in this draft. But who's that quarterback? They thought it was going to be Mac Jones. But then they started to see pro days. They watched more film. They did more homework. They got and collected more information. So now here they're at a few days out. And I was told that they have yet to make a decision who they're going to pick on Thursday at that number three spot for a quarterback. All right. So that, that is going to completely shape the top of this draft one way or the other. But what we do know is that it will be a quarterback. We know that with as much certainty as you can know anything at this stage. So Dominique, let me then come to you because that will then set up Atlanta with a very interesting situation. They'll really have three options as I see it. One of them is take a quarterback to be Matt Ryan's heir apparent. The next is trade out, as Diana just suggested, to someone who might want to take a quarterback. And the third is to take Kyle Pitts, the tight end, who many people believe is the best player in the entire draft. What do you think, Dominique, they should do? Well, I think that it depends on the trade-out offer. If they can find somebody thirsty enough that they can take advantage of them, please, by all means, do that. But I think that is a bit of a cop-out. Just say trade back. So I, in that situation, I think I go for pits and go all in on this roster that they have now and maybe try to out-offense everybody because that is their only hope and return Matt Ryan to that MVP level Super Bowl losing Matt Ryan that we saw uh, a few years ago. How about you, Tim? If you're making that decision, considering Ryan, his situation, his future, new coach, new coaching staff, new general manager, what would you do in Atlanta? Draft a quarterback. It's actually an easy one for me. You know, Matt Ryan's had three straight uh, seasons without a winning record in Atlanta. He's 36 years old. And when, you know, we speak about the new leadership in Atlanta between Arthur Smith, new general manager. Best case scenario for everything I think that trumps all this is trade back because someone needs a quarterback and you could absolutely get the farm from a team like Denver. I think that's what they should do and try to build up an organization that is ready for a quarterback. Far too often we see quarterbacks put in organizations that aren't yet ready for them and then they all fail. Right, which would, however, go back to what Tim just said a moment ago about the possibility of drafting one and having him sit behind Ryan for a year or two, depending on how that situation yeah. plays out. Diana, obviously, it also will come down to how they look at the quarterbacks. We all look at them somewhat differently. Three guys will be gone. So Atlanta doesn't get to choose which yeah. one of the five they want. Yeah, I agree. I'm actually covering the Falcons on draft night. They're my team, so I'll be with you on Thursday. And I can tell you, they have attended every single quarterback pro day. Every one of them, they've had a representative there. So they obviously have interest in a quarterback. And I was told they have their eye on one. If he's there, they will take him. If he's not, they are very open to trading back to collect more picks. 
But I love that we're bringing up the Kyle Pitts element here, okay? Because you talk about the Tennessee Titans offense. They use their tight ends. This is something that Arthur Smith is obviously comfortable with. We saw when Delaney Walker was even there in Tennessee. So Atlanta really has a plethora of options here that could all really work for them. I was told, though, in terms of their feelings about Matt Ryan, they think he still has years left in him. They still think he can play. So this isn't a new regime coming in, you know, with Arthur Smith going, I need to find my Ryan Tannehill right now. They believe in Matt Ryan. So this could be something where if the if the the, the trade is enough or the, they're getting the right amount, they may be willing to trade back. But I was told that Atlanta's asking price is very high. Well, sure. I, I mean, it's a fascinating thing because I think it really comes down as much as anything to how close do you think you are to winning. Uh, Kyle Pitts is, looks like he's going to be a great player, but he's – I'm going to use the word frivolous. That's a terrible word to attach to a, to a young prospect. But that's the guy that you draft to try and put you over the top, right? We keep talking about that's, that with yeah, Dallas. I mean, uh, yeah. Is talk- Atlanta, Dominique, cl- that close yeah. to doing something special? That would be considered hood-rich drafting. What we've talked about before, Greeny, is that you start buying rims for a car that is not quite ready to have rims just yet. But I don't think Kyle Pitts is that. I think he is so special that he can be the engine of an offense. I understand that if you get a guy who you think is going to take your offense to the next level, Kyle Pitts is the type of guy that you can put in and build around for a long future, and it'll be attractive for any young quarterback that you bring in going forward. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.